So how about Devon Godshaw going to the New England Patriots? Honestly, this is a really, I think it's going to be a really underrated move because obviously he's a nose tackle. You're not going to get that much attention, but he's someone that they just desperately needed last year. And I think he could be a really good fit in that defense, especially, you know, they're a defense that notoriously likes their 3-4. So getting someone who can play nose tackle, he can also play defensive end in a 3-4. That's just uh, very valuable. And on top of that, the price is actually pretty pretty reasonable too. 16 million, 9 million guaranteed for a two-year deal. Uh, you can definitely deal with that and it gives them plenty of money to continue to work with the rest of this offseason. So let's jump into the film study and really first things first, you're going to watch want to watch that matchup right there. This is actually Miami going up against New England, which is kind of interesting. Uh, he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against David Andrews and you do expect a nose tackle to be able to beat a center one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and, you know, listen, Andrew's very good center. So there is some exceptions here. But uh, this is actually going to be a negative play from Godshaw. I wanted to start off with, a, you know, sort of the negatives before getting to the positives. And watch, once this play starts, you know, uh, Andrew's gets the good hand placement. And I do kind of want every now and then wonder if Godshaw really has the footwork in situations like that to sort of make up for it. Uh, his hands aren't the best, to be honest, and his footwork isn't the best. What he does have is size. He's 315. Uh, he weighs 315 pounds is what I mean. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that his footwork and hands are bad either. I'm just saying he's not maybe necessarily elite, but he is good. That's kind of how I feel about him. He is probably properly paid at $8 million a year. Because now I want to show this play. And honestly, he probably shines a little bit brighter in the run defense than in pass defense. Although, uh, he can rush the passer as well. But again, it's just more difficult to do that from the middle anyways. But... Uh, this is going to be a running play, and it's actually going to be Joe Thune who's going to be blocking uh, Godshaw one-on-one -on, -one on this one. But watch this first step. I mean, watch how Thune's trying to get the hand placement, but he doesn't exactly have it exactly what he wants. I mean, if you notice, Thune's left arm is all the way on Godshaw's right side of his body, and so now he's going to have to kind of try and push Godshaw out of the way. The issue is just, again... Uh, there's a lot of things you can teach. You can't teach size. I mean, I guess you kind of could. You could, you know, tell, tell someone to eat nachos, but only to some degree. And, you know, someone who can be as big and strong as Godshaw is, it's, that's where the value comes in. And watch how he is going to be able to run over and help make this tackle. It also kind of looked like he made a tackle by, like, tripping, uh, the halfback. So, hey, make the tackle any way you can. Uh, good play by Godshaw. All right, now let's talk about double teams for a second. Because, uh, listen, let's be honest. When New England had a defensive, interior defensive lineman get double teamed, it often didn't work out. And I think that they need some guys who can just take on double teams. And Godshaw is a guy who... Well, let's be honest, nobody does well against a double team. He can hold his own to some degree. He's not Vita Vea, who basically can, you know, you take take seven guys to stop that one. But, like, for Godshaw, he is someone who can, I, I feel that that's the best way I could phrase it, hold his own in a double team. This is an example. The center and right guard will be double teaming him. And typically what you do with a double team is it's not like you have two guys who just straight up block uh, Godshaw in this scenario. Usually what you want to do is, you know, start off with those two guys blocking him, but then typically it would be the guard in this situation eventually gets off that block and then moves up to block 51, the linebacker there. But watch Godshaw and watch how he just sort of lowers that left leg like that. That's how you can, uh, create sort of this, uh, you know, leverage to allow, make it just that much more difficult to be moved. And while he does eventually get moved, that's kind of why I'm saying he held his own. He made things a lot more difficult for Buffalo. No one could get off their block to block somebody else. And there were also the gaps that were supposed to be there basically weren't there at all. And it was in large part because of Godshaw's play. So Again, that's a perfect example of just something that's not going to show up on the stat sheet, but it's something that I'm sure Bill Belichick noticed when he was watching tape and trying to figure out which kind of guys he should pay money to in free agency. I think a play like this could be a really good example of showing what he really brings to New England. So uh, he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against a Buffalo Bills center right here, which again, center, uh, it's a matchup you expect to win if you're Buffalo, but you know, it's a running play, not a passing play. So that makes things a little bit easier for the offense. Anyways, largely how this is going to go, however, is it, I think it's going to do a good job of showing what he brings. So watch what happens. Once this play starts, you know, 
uh, Godshot embraces the contact. There is clearly a gap where the bat could run to, which is just to our right of Godshot, right? And also to Godshot's right, you know? Uh, that's kind of a gap that he could potentially, the bat could potentially run through. That's what he's going to try and run through. But Godsha uses his strength to close it and then reaches out and helps make that tackle. Honestly, that's a big part of NFL is, and you know, being a player uh, that plays on the interior is just being able to reach your arm out and make that tackle. I've seen 70 yard runs that wouldn't have been 70 yard runs had a guy not, you know, sort of missed on that kind of play. So having someone who, again, can help stop the run. That was an issue for New England last year. They've got someone who can help them out now. So that's really the the key. And that's, again, that's why they're paying him. And they're not paying him that much either. Although I do want to talk about his pass rush a little bit as well. He's not a black hole as a pass rusher. He's not a guy who is only valuable in the running game. Now, he's much more valuable in the running game, I would say, just because of the nature of his position. You know, you play a nose tackle more often than not, uh, it's actually pretty common. You could end up with double teams, which means that, you know, uh, it, it, the reality is you're just not going to get that much pressure that often and get that many opportunities that often. But like on this play, he's going up one-on-one -on -one against Buffalo's left guard, and he's going to do a good job. So once this play starts, watch how he gets his left arm, and he's going to grab on to the guard's right sort of, uh, you know, peck area and he's going to grab on to the to the jersey and what his his goal here is and really he's grabbing onto the pad and what his goal here is to do is to just pull the guard essentially to the left side of the screen so that way he can run to the right that's what he's trying to do here it's a, it's a pull move and watch how he pulls it off and he does create some pressure Allen had enough time still to make a throw for a touchdown so that's not great but you know it was some quick pressure and that's kind of the thing is he's probably not going to get there in one second most nose tackles aren't but he can at least occasionally if there's a long play create some pressure that way so that's the plus side in the passing game and then he's a really good run stopper so this is you know such a patriots move it's a guy that wasn't on a lot of people's uh you know boards but he's someone who is very valuable and could make a big difference to the team and on top of that i think they're getting him for a bit of an underpaid price obviously the patriots are continuing to you know improve they're using this cap space wisely they made the john U signing as well uh, which, you know, we should have a video on JKS. It won't be me, but someone else is making one. So uh, stay on the lookout for that. And yeah, I think that this is a this is a really underrated move and one that I do think that people will be surprised uh, how well it works out. Or And, you know, listen, there's also this factor of, hey, it's the Patriots. They have gotten players who were good that ended up having great seasons with New England. Like, that is something that has happened in the past. And really, the only reason why Miami is letting Godshaw walk is just because they have a lot of, you know, talent in that area. So this is the move I always like, is get someone who is talented, but sort of, you know, there was a backlog, so he they, a team let him go. Get that guy. It can work out really well. So I think it's smart. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this move? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, Thanks for watching.